So our goal here is to reuse our configuration here so that we can set up multiple environments using the same infrastructure as code here, using the same configuration and getting copies of our infrastructure for different environments. I mentioned in the last video that Terraform has a thing called workspaces. So we do Terraform workspace list. We can list our current workspaces, which is just default, which is the uh, default one that comes with Terraform. All of your workspaces are in the default workspace by default, and you cannot delete that one. And we have some other commands that we can do, like new, list, show, select, and delete Terraform workspaces. So let's go ahead and check out the documentation to see how those work. So each Terraform configuration has an associated backend that defines how operations are executed, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they persist data such as Terraform state. A persisted data store in the backend belongs to a workspace. Over here, we saw that's true. We're in the default workspace by default, if you don't do anything else. And the default workspace is where uh, our stuff is stored. In our case, in our S3 backend, where our state is stored, it's in the default workspace. Certain backends support multiple named workspaces, and S3 is one of them. So we can use workspaces. So Terraform starts with a single one named default. It's special because you can't delete it. You can manage Terraform workspaces with a workspace command. You can use the current workspace inside of your code. It'll use the terraform.workspace configuration variable here, and you can use that for things like staging versus production versus anything. It doesn't even have to be an environment. And we have one to use multiple workspaces here because you don't always want to use them. So they're convenient in a number of situations that can't solve all problems. So a common use case is uh, to create parallel distinct copies of a set of infrastructure in order to test a set of changes or blah, blah, blah. In other words, a distinct copy of a set of infrastructure. Um, so in our case, what we want to do is use a staging versus production versus QA environment. So we're going to see how to use workspaces to do that in our case. And there's a whole other bunch of UK use cases they talk about here. I'm not going to cover all of that. I'm just going to show you one use case for workspaces here, although there's other uh, stuff that you can do with them. For example, some people might have a networking workspace versus an EC2 workspace or something. There's a lot of possibilities. Now, the other thing is that workspaces aren't necessarily always used because once you get into larger teams, I think people do a little bit of a different setup for their Terraform stuff. But it's still a very useful tool. You should definitely know about it and maybe even use it. I won't say it's not used by large or medium teams. I think some teams still use it. It very much depends on how you want to configure your Terraform because there's a lot of possibilities. Let's head back over here. We have staging here. And actually, let's go Terraform plan. I think all of my infrastructure is currently deleted. So this plan should come back with something like 34 resources it wants to create. It does. So I have nothing created here. I can start from scratch, essentially. We saw I'm in the default workspace. And I'm going to go ahead and actually create nothing in the default workspace. What I want to do is create one. So I'm going to do Terraform workspace new. I'm going to call it staging. If I do Terraform workspace show, it should show that, show that I'm in the staging workspace, just like it says here, right? Switching me to staging, and it created it. So we can go ahead and create infrastructure there. So Terraform apply there, and we'll just see that it's going to do the plan again. It's going to tell me it's going to create 34 uh, items. I'll hit yes. And this will go ahead and create all this infrastructure. And when that's done, we'll see how we can create a new copy of that infrastructure as well using a new workspace. And actually, while this is creating, we can go ahead and make a needed change here. So we have a environment infrastructure env here. Instead of this, we can go ahead and set a local variable up here. So we're going to do a locals block. Locals block is going to create a local variable, which is a good place to put defaults. And we can say infra, infra env here equals terraform dot workspace. Now we have that locals. So we can go ahead and delete infrastructure environment that variable here, and we can say that any time infrastructure environment was used, we can go ahead and replace var dot infra env with local dot infrastructure environment. We could have straight up replaced this with terraform.workspace as well. I'm just going to choose to have a local infrastructure environment variable here, though. Now here, let's go ahead and add uh, infra env. So I'm going to search for uses of infrastructure environments around here. And we have those variables defined, but those are inside of the modules. So I think we only needed to change that in the top level here. Yeah. And in fact, our variables only has this one variable. So I'm going to go ahead and just comment that out for now. OK, so let's see. Our stuff finished applying down here, right? Yep. So let's do Terraform plan after our change up above. And it is all up to date. There's nothing to change because we have successfully changed our uh, environment setup here. So that's using the work current workspace as the infrastructure environment. Now, just a note here, you could actually say if the Terraform.workspace 
equals default, then maybe the default is dev, else use Terraform workspace. You can do something fancy like that as well to make your default uh, workspace usable, and maybe it's dev or staging or production, whatever you want. In my case, I'm just not going to use the default workspace right now. Real quick, let's look up the definition for locals here because it's kind of confusing about when you would use locals versus a variable. So a local value assigns a name to an expression so that you can use it multiple times within a module without repeating it. So we can say we have locals like this, service name and owner, but these aren't expressions, so that's kind of a dumb example of it. But here you can see instance IDs, this local variable, is the result of an expression of a concatenation of the AW instances IDs. So IDs for multiple sets of EC2 instances merged together into what looks like, I guess, a string of instance IDs, right? And this is uh, ran once, and then the variable instance IDs can be used over and over again, the local variable, and it doesn't have to redo and rerun this function over and over again. So that's kind of a useful case for locals. So that's pretty simple. It's basically just a way to run some calculation once, some work once, and then not have to repeat it over and over again every time you want a variable. Okay, so how do we change infrastructure? We have all of our staging stuff set up. So let's do Terraform Workspace New, and we'll say Production. So we created and switched to Workspace Production. So if we do Terraform Plan now, we can see that um, oh, our AMI, that is so annoying. Okay, let's just go ahead and hard code this. So I only created one AMI for the staging environment. And so I'm just going to say always use the staging for environment for the AMI. That's a little annoying. You don't actually want to do this in your use case, but I'm going to go ahead and just hard code staging because I don't have the other AMI, so I don't want to bother rebuilding it right now. So if we did do this, we would see our plan is going to come back with 34 new resources to make. It's not modifying anything, right? Not zero to change, zero to destroy. It's going to add 34. We're going to have a whole duplicate copy of our infrastructure, but it's all going to be tagged production. It's going to be created for our production use cases. So let's go ahead and apply that. I'll say yes. Okay, so that finished. Let's go ahead and head over to our web browser here and see what we have created here. We should have a duplicate of everything. And we have three VPCs, so that's a good sign. A staging VPC and a production VPC. Great. Let's just pop over to EC2. Instance is running five, so that's four plus this extra one we have that is not part of our infrastructure here in Terraform. All right, so we have a production web and a production worker, a staging web, a staging worker, just where we wanted, right? It's all duplicated and everything segmented by tags and some stuff by names and all that good stuff. So if we need to find stuff from production, we could just go ahead and filter by production and see that all of our good stuff here in production is showing up. Let's go ahead and check out S3 and check out what our state looks like. So Cloudcast Terraform course here, I believe, is the one we're using currently. And we, here, we have some new stuff. So originally, we had Cloudcast and Terraform TF state. If we go in here, we have a new M folder. This is what you get for using workspaces. And then in the environment directory, we have production and staging. And each one has a Cloudcast, the name of the infrastructure, and the Terraform TF state. So prepended to our folder names is env and staging. If I head back over to PHP Storm and scroll up, that stuff is prepended to the key here. So we end up with m slash staging, and staging gets changed with the workspace name, such as production and all that good stuff. So that's all that's happening there. That is how Workspaces is dividing up our infrastructure here. It's just creating different state files for us. So that's a pretty simple and effective way to divide up your Terraform configuration using multiple environments. In the next video, I'm going to show you a different way to do this and discuss some of the trade-offs between the two.